Hello everyone and welcome back to part 3 of my WWF No Mercy Let's Play videos where I am trying to 100% the light heavyweight championship and you see right there I'm finally turning the music off I'm finally turning the music off I don't even know why I had the music on I you know when I used to play this game a long time ago I really believe and I still kind of believe it that if you keep the music on it kind of slows down the gameplay it might not seem noticeable in singles matches, but definitely in four player matches or, um, you know, the ladder matches or steel cage matches. I really do believe that the music, the background music you have while you wrestle, slows it down. I don't know, that's just me. I definitely feel like this run goes a lot faster, and all my future videos, I will not have the background music playing. It's also kind of lame to hear it, <laughs> you know, it's like you don't have background music playing in real wrestling, so. Um, but anyway, this is a no frills uh, run. I am playing as Crash Holly, and this run is going to be pretty quick, mainly because I have to lose two of the matches. Once again, I am trying to 100% the light heavyweight championship, um, and in order to do that, <clears throat> Excuse me in order to do that you have to complete all the different paths in the light heavyweight championship Basically all those little squares that are on that little map uh, When you first choose the matches each match Though you have to unlock every single one of those now the game doesn't tell you how many you need or how many are there or What does what? You have to kind of either a figure it out on your own or B do what I do and just go to game facts and get a really good um, Championship guide so in this one. This is my third. This is my third um, Attempt at going after the championship. I forgot to mention in my other two videos My first video is with S.A. Rios and my second video is with Christian. I forgot to mention that for these championship modes you have the new contender paths and the champion paths. Now, new contender is basically you're going for the title and you're not the champion. But if you choose the championship path as the champion, then it's a whole different set of paths. Now, the light heavyweight has four paths for the new contender and two paths for the current champion. So this is this is my third attempt as a contender. So I have only one more, and then I'll be playing as the people who already have the titles. So, basically for this path, you have to lose the first match, and then you lose the fourth match, and every other match you win, and every other match you have to win, like I said in the my last video, they give you, they, they basically, the only hint you really get as to unlocking all the different paths without the help of a guide, um, is at the beginning of the match, it'll tell you the storyline will progress whether you win or lose, so... For this path, I have the first match, you can win or lose, and I'm going to lose it. And then the next two matches, I have to win it. Um, if I don't win it, I have a few reach tries um, in order to win it again. Otherwise, I'll fail the, the mode and I'll have to start from the beginning. But then the fourth match, I'll lose. So here, at first, I don't know what I was thinking, honestly. At first, I was like, eh, I'll just like go get some water or something. <laughs> And just stand there and let these guys duke it out but then eventually I'm like wait a minute what am I doing this is a four-way dance that's gonna take forever if I let them do that so let me um, go ahead and speed this process up and uh, eliminate two of the guys and then just get myself eliminated at the end <clears throat> excuse me it took me a while to figure that out <laughs> or not figure that out but just come to that realization I don't know, sometimes I, I forget how to play this game. But anyway, I'm playing as Crash Holly, Cousin Crash. And like I said um, at the start of this series, I'm going to try to play as people who actually held the light heavyweight championship and um, had some sort of impact. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't mean to clear my throat, but I don't know, my, my throat is really bothering me. Anyway, um... So Crash Holly, he won the title on March 13th in the year 2000 um, on an episode of Sunday Night Heat. Now I know I say, uh, actually March 13th, 2001, I should say. Now, I try to, with these Let's Play videos, keep it into you know the context of the year the game was probably being developed, which is, I would assume, 
you know, it had to have been developed right after WrestleMania 2000 um, released. Probably they were working on it a few months beforehand, but um, and all the way until No Mercy was released. So I like to cover November 1999 to November 2000. Uh, when I talk about the historical context of these wrestlers, but Crash Holly actually became light heavyweight champion after this game had already been released. Um, but it's still important to play as him because he held the title for 47 days, and that actually puts him pretty high in terms of combined total days for a title reign for light heavyweight champions. He held it much longer than S.A. Rios and Christian did, so I decided to play as him. Even though for most of the year, you might remember Crash Holly just pretty much was involved either in tag team matches with his um, with Hardcore Holly, who was billed as his cousin, or um, in hardcore matches, when Crash Holly uh, first became the hardcore champion, he was so proud and he felt like he could defend it anytime, anywhere, as long as there was a ref. And he instated the 24-7 um, rule. And that's when the hardcore championship title became a 24-7 title and they had all these vignettes and you know of him being at a carnival and a clown's like hey you're crash holly you're the hardcore champion hey wait a minute there's a ref over here i want to steal your hardcore title and like all these shenanigans happen and you can thank crash holly because of that and that's what he did for most of the year um but he but when he won the light heavyweight title it was on an episode of sunday night heat and he beat dean malenko for the championship dean malenko was pretty much champion for all of 2000 he um, held the title for 322 days, and it was Dean Malenko's second and actually last reign as champion when um, Crash Holly beat him. And in this game, when you first start the light heavyweight championship mode, Dean Malenko is the current champion. So they, you know, they they got that right. And I say that because WCW NWO Revenge has a lot of champions when you when you play the mode that never either never were champions or weren't champions at the time the game came out um so he held the title for 47 days he only defended it on heat uh there's only two times he defended it and they were both on episodes of heat it was against funaki and grandmaster sexy and then the third time he defended it he lost to jerry lynn who debuted um in the company at the time and now sunday night heat was basically um, matches that happened before Raw and the pay-per-views and they were just aired at a, at a, at a later date um, so that shows you how much again how much WWE really cared about the light heavyweight championship so that they were being defended on these dark matches and then um, aired later on so the titles were changing a full like week before you ever got to see it um, <clears throat> so before Crash Holly became light heavyweight champion though and there I go get eliminated by Grandmaster Sexy I, again I was using my technique of just trying to do strong grapples to get countered I did that in my last video with Christian um, that's the best way to lose a match there I go I'm just going for a strong grapple because it's like okay he's gonna roll he's gonna roll through this this Frankensteiner you know her Karana and um, you you wanna you wanna know your character's movesets so that you know okay if they were to counter it, what would the counter be? You know, sometimes they could counter it in a schoolboy roll up. Sometimes they'll counter it in a victory roll. So I, I, I'm pretty much always confident that if they're gonna counter her Karana, it's gonna be the roll through and the pin. So that's the best way to do it. Uh, now there's gonna be a tournament for the light heavyweight championship, and um, so these matches you pretty much have to win, except for when we get to the fourth match. So. Like I said, this is a no frills run. Yeah, I mean, this is business as usual. I'm just going through it um, pretty easily with Crash. Um, he's got a good move set in the game. I mean, it's nothing too crazy. It's pretty standard. You know, his specials, the jumping, tornado DDT. Um, you know, he honestly, he's got a pretty generic move set in the game. Um, Crash Holly really, he did a lot of special things actually in real life. Um, Crash Holly actually trained in Mexico for a bit, um, so he definitely knew how to wrestle the Lucha Libre style. Uh, 
you know, had a pretty healthy indie career. Um, and again, I really feel like if the light heavyweight division was allowed to, you know, or, or given the, 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 the freedom to, to have these wrestlers really take control of these matches and do whatever they wanted, like the cruiserweight division in WCW, um, they would have had more opportunity to shine. Um, but anyway, it doesn't matter for Crash in the year 2000, pretty much, because he was... <clears throat> excuse me, he was running around as the hardcore champion. But before he became light heavyweight champion, um, he was actually European champion for two days. He beat William Regal and then lost to him right after that. And he was tag team champion with his cousin, Hardcore Holly, his, his on-camera cousin. They weren't really cousins. But that's how Crash Holly was introduced to us. He was introduced to us as the cousin of Hardcore Holly. Um, they were champions for 15 days. They actually beat the Rock and Sock Connection on an episode of Raw. And he was Hardcore Champion. Um, he would eventually hold the Hardcore Championship 22 times. With a combined total of 108 days. <laughs> Again, it was the 24-7 rule, so a lot of the times when he would lose the title, he would just win it right back like a few minutes later. Um, and he did that a few times throughout the year. So when you hear, oh, 22-time champion, oh, wow, like how long has this guy been wrestling? For like 30 years? Like, no. It, all in all, his total reign as hardcore champion was 108 days. And I'll get more into that. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't know. I have like a frog in my throat today. Um, I'll get more into his cha his hardcore championship reigns when I probably play him again in the hardcore championship path. But um, it is notable to bring that up. Um, so, I mean, that's that's pretty much what it was for him from the year from um, November 1999 to November 2000. Uh, he was actually in the Survivor Series match I, I, I mentioned uh, in Christian's video. Uh, it was Edge and Christian and the Hardy Boys versus Too Cool and the Hollies, uh, Survivor Series 99. At Armageddon, um, the Hollies took on Rikishi and Viscera. This was during their you know super heavyweight gimmick. They, they thought they were true super heavyweights, and they came to the ring with a scale, and, and that's why they do that in the game. And I actually think that's so neat in the game that, that Crash Holly and Hardcore Holly, um, they could come down. The Crash Holly comes down walking with the scales. I mean, I guess that's a perfect time to mention, too. Um... In the opening credits, you see Crash Holly and Hardcore Holly coming down the ring together. And then sometimes in the championship paths, um, you'll see teams coming down together. Now, when you actually do tag team matches, um, they don't come down together. Like they did in um, all the other games before No Mercy. Um, every other game before No Mercy, uh, tag team tag team matches if if they had the same entrance music and and, and titan titantron they would come to the ring together um but in this game they don't i'm i i'm assuming it's because to save memory space in the game because why would they take that out um it's such a staple of a lot of these tag teams and it helps to recreate that um you know production quality that you saw when watching wrestling so I'm, I'm thinking it's terms to save memory space maybe it was you know too much to have them come down at the same time and they needed to cut some corners and they were like whatever it's not really that big of a deal um, I kind of missed it I, I really liked it especially in WrestleMania 2000 you know you can edit some guys to come together and then um, you know different different things would appear like like the New Age Outlaws uh, in the game, you know, in WrestleMania 2000, Billy Gunn has his Mr. Ass music. But if you... So when you had Billy Gunn and Road Dogg team up, they came out separately. But if you change Billy Gunn to the New Age Outlaw entrance and theme, um, he when he came out with Road Dogg, their name changed to the New Age Outlaws. So it was little cool things like that in WrestleMania 2000 that I really liked when it came to the tag team entrances. You know, and I kind of would have liked to see Hardcore and Crash come down together and hard and Crash carrying the scale and walking in the walking animation that they did in this game because they did it so perfectly. Anyway, that's just my little aside about, uh, you know, some of the changes that were made from 
uh, WrestleMania 2000 to No Mercy. Um, so yeah, they fought Rikishi and Viscera. They beat them. No big deal. Uh, then there was the Royal Rumble, January 2000. Um, Crash Holly was number 16, and he was actually the 16th person eliminated. <laughs> In No Way Out, February of 2000, Crash Holly is nowhere to be found. I don't know why he wasn't on that pay-per-view. Um, or maybe he was in a skit defending the hardcore title because he was hardcore champion around that time. Uh, so maybe there was a skit where they pre-recorded, but he didn't actually have a scheduled pay-per-view match. Then comes WrestleMania 2000, aka WrestleMania 16. Um, they had the hardcore battle royal, and um, you know I'm not gonna go into too much detail because I want to save a lot of this hardcore stuff for when I play him in the hardcore championship path. But um, he was the hardcore champion, and it was a 15-minute match, and you know the match could change hands multiple times, you know. But whoever was the champion at the end of the 15 minutes. They were the hardcore champion. So Crash Holly, um, he lost the title to Taz. And then the title changed hands a few times after that. And then Taz got it back. But then Crash Holly beat Taz to get it back from the beginning. And then Hardcore Holly beat Crash Holly. That's just an example of how crazy the hardcore division was in terms of the title changing so rapidly. Um, the next pay-per-view, Backlash, in April, in the late April of 2000, um, Crash Holly was already champion again. <laughs> so somewhere from somewhere between WrestleMania 2000 to Backlash, he regained the title. Um, he competed in a six-man hardcore match against Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy, Perry Saturn, Taz, and Hardcore Holly. That's a great lineup. That's a great lineup to have a hardcore match, and that's honestly what I felt the hardcore division should have been. Um, somehow Crash won. Somehow Crash retained the title in that match with those guys. You don't think that he would, but he did. Uh, he really had a great. He really had a great push in that sense. Uh, he had a he had a great year. He was pretty over. Um, at the next pay per view, Insurrection. UK 2000 he defended his hardcore championship against British Bulldog who I believe just came back to the company around that time um, he lost that match so he lost his belt to British Bulldog the next pay-per-view Judgment Day he didn't have a match um, then there was the King of the Ring now Crash Holly was a semi-finalist for the King of the Ring believe it or not I don't even remember this and he he was I had to watch it I had to rewatch it on the WWE Network because I was like, what? Crash Holly? Not to, not to say anything bad about Crash Holly. I liked Crash Holly. He was funny. I liked his gimmick. But I don't know. The King of the Ring to me was always like, these these guys are going to be the future. Someone's going to win this, this, this tournament and they're going to be the future of the King of the Ring. So usually all the guys in the King of the Ring were, you know, were believable as being future contenders for like you know the WWF championship. Um, Crash Holly somehow made it all the way to the semifinals. Um, his first round, his first and second round matches were. Um, <clears throat> excuse me again. I'm so sorry. His first and second round matches were aired on like a Raw and SmackDown, and he beat Albert in the first round, and then he beat Hardcore Holly in the second round. Um, so at the pay-per-view he fought Bull Buchanan in the quarterfinal and then he won that one and then he fought Kurt Angle in the semifinal and Kurt Angle I had to watch it Kurt Angle against Crash Holly King of the Ring 2000 way to go Crash I would say that's a bigger highlight than being the hardcore champion uh, 22 times with a combined total of 108 days but that's just me um, Kurt Angle beat the crap out of him. It was a pretty easy match for Kurt Angle. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that, that was his highlight. King of the Ring, middle of the year, you, you know, up top. And then, now, it fully loaded. loaded ugh, I'm having trouble speaking today. At fully loaded, July 23rd, um, he actually fought Dean Malenko for the light heavyweight championship. Dean Malenko going through a tear that year as the light heavyweight champion and um him and crash fall a sign of things to come maybe you know possibly well yeah eventually yes <laughs> well there i go again 
See, right away, I just keep going for the strong grapple. And look, Jeff Hardy gets the fastest win of his career. 21 seconds. Hold down that control stick and you'll stay in the pin. It's the easiest way to lose these matches when you have to. Because you do have to lose matches when you're doing the championship paths. And that's how they unlock different um, things. And then after this is, you know, smooth sailing again. I just got to win the next two matches. Um, so, yeah, he fought Dimaleko at Fully Loaded for the Light Heavyweight Champion. So, he did compete for the title that year. Um, so, it's, so you know, I, I'm justifying it. I'm justifying playing his Crash because he, you know, he was a lightweight and he did win the title eventually. And, look, he fought for it on, on a pay-per-view. Go watch it if you don't believe me. Oh, wait, actually... Side note, or I should say footnote, it was at the fully loaded pay-per-view, but it was it was taped for Sunday Night Heat. I wrote that in my notes. I forgot to mention it. <laughs> so it wasn't on the fully loaded pay-per-view. It was just one of the matches before the pay-per-view started that they aired on Sunday Night Heat later that week. So... Hey, he was a semi-finalist for the King of the Ring. <laughs> SummerSlam, August 2000. Um, he wasn't on the pay-per-view. And then at Unforgiven, September of 2000. Um, he was involved in another hardcore invitational battle royal. Uh, similar to the WrestleMania 2000 uh, hardcore battle royal. Steve Blackman was the champion at the time. Um, and... Uh, there was a few other people in the match. Crash Holly actually pinned Steve Blackman first. Uh, but then Saturn beat Crash. And then Blackman beat Saturn. And then Blackman held on to the end of the match. And he stayed champion. So um, that's two hardcore invitational tournaments so far. Or battle royals so far that Crash Holly unfortunately did not win. Oh well. And then in No Mercy, October 2000, the pay-per-view which this game is named, uh, this game is named after. No Mercy would actually come out the next month in November. Um, Crash Holly wasn't on the pay-per-view, <laughs> so. And then Survivor so Series is is pretty much the start of a new direction for the Crash Holly character because. Um, he he was involved in a six man or six person mixed tag team match uh, where it was Steve ba Blackman, Crash Holly, and the new the newly introduced Molly Holly, who was another cousin, a female cousin introduced earlier that month, um, and right away they entered in a feud with TNA, who was Test Albert and Trish Stratus. I was a big fan of Molly Holly. I thought she was a great wrestler. And her matches with Trish actually were really good. Um, and the chemistry she had with Crash was really good and really funny. Um, but yeah, so they had that um, six-person mixed tag match. And she was, you know, by... She was still with Crash when he won the light heavyweight title um, later on in March. So there you go. That's Crash Holly from... Survivor Series 99 to Survivor Series 2000. Still connecting it to um, a lot of what happened at the time. Um, even though he won the Light Heavyweight Championship after No Mercy came out. Whatever. <laughs> you're going to see. You're going to see. I'm going to. I'm going to try to be creative with, with a lot of these runs. I'm going to choose wrestlers that, you know. I can talk about what they did at length as champion, but with the light heavyweight championship, you know, a lot of these guys didn't hold the title for more than 30 days, so it's tough sometimes when you have someone like, you know, Gilbert, who was so dominant, but it's like, I'm not going to create a call and play as Gilbert. I'm just not. It's just not going to happen. Uh, I'll play, I'll, I'll create a call and play as Jerry Lynn, but I'm not going to play as Gilbert. So... Crash Holly gets a light heavyweight championship run. Again, I like Crash. I'm, I'm going to do a tag team run with the Hollies. I know that. And I'm going to do a hardcore championship run with the Hollies. With with, with Crash. Um, probably not going to do a run with Crash as the European champion. Because he only held it for two days. Um, 
So yeah, so this is the last match facing Christian that I did in the last playthrough in his brood gimmick, his brood gear, which I still think is funny. Is this a ladder match? I wasn't paying attention. Nope, this is a regular match. See how fast I make. I'll uh, take Christian down. So yeah, so there you go. That's Crash Holly in a nutshell. Um, coming up next, who do I have coming up next? Uh, t -t -t I have. Is it X Pac? I think it's X Pac. It's X Pac. X Pac is next, or is it Taka? It might be Taka. It's one of them. Because I made a mistake. I think. I think I started doing it. I don't remember. I'll have to check. But it's either X-Pac or Ataka that's coming up next. So that should be fun. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Molly Holly. I'll probably create a call of Molly Holly and do a uh, run with her um, for the women's title. Um, I mean, if you guys got any suggestions later on for some of the championships, who you, who you really would like me to see do a run of, um, def definitely let me know. Um, I'm open to any suggestions. I mean, I have a, I have it pretty much all mapped out uh, of who I want to play as, but I'm not tied down to that, you know. If people are gonna say, "Oh, I really want to see, uh, you know, a European title run with so and so wrestler," um, I'll do it, you know. I don't mind. Or if you, e or even if you want to see me create a wrestler and do it. The really cool thing about this, and you'll see it soon, is that. Um, you can change the title, who holds the title, without going through the championship mode, which I really love. Um, one of the things, again, that was taking out for No Mercy that was in the other games was the Create a Belt mode. Now, the Create a Belt mode wasn't that great, really, in WrestleMania 2000, because it was just all, you know, it only had the few belts that, that were in the WWF at the time. Um, but the Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 create a belt was really cool because it had a lot of older belts or a lot of different belts from different organizations i think it had something like around 20 belts and new japan only has you know five belts four belts um so that was really fun to create all these different belts from all these different organizations and i wish they incorporated that into no mercy but they didn't but at least they let you defend the title um as one of the preset options when you're choosing an exhibition match so that's really cool um, so if you want to do a championship run um, with a defending champion as a certain character all you have to do is just play a regular match beat them for the title and then you can go ahead into the championship mode and do that and I'll do that later on I'll do that for the light heavyweight championship and um, you know I plan on doing that for all the other modes so here I got a special and you know Christian's trying to avoid it. Luckily, I was able to counter there and just barely got it off. You have like a split second. As long as you're doing that strong grapple when your special meter is fading, you'll still pull off the special. Um, but Christian kicked out anyway, so it didn't even matter. If, if Christian didn't put up a fight in the beginning, I probably would have been able to pull off two specials and get the pin. If you haven't done enough damage to your opponent, Usually two specials is enough to put them away, um, depending on what your special is. Every every move has a rating, and you can see the ratings in the Create and Wrestler mode. They're letter grades, basically, and they go from E to like S, S being the highest. Um, the higher the rating, the more powerful the move. Um, so, But usually two specials is enough to put you into range of winning the match um, as long as you've done some sort of offense on the computer opponent and you know now here I'm starting to do more of an offense I'm able to do strong grapples you know you want to start out doing weak grapples and you want to start out doing weak B grapples because weak A grapples don't raise your meter weak B grapples do um, it wasn't always like that in WCW NWO Revenge if you did weak A grapples, it would raise your meter and the opponent's meter. Um, but if you did weak, weak B grapples, it would just raise yours. I went with a victory roll there because I wasn't expecting it. I thought he was going to kick out, but he didn't. Because this is WWF No Mercy on Expert mode, right? It's so difficult. 
Yeah, I don't know. I, sometimes, you know, I just don't know. I get, I get these wins and I don't even see it coming. So, so, you know, but then again, you know, what what else was I going to finish with, right? It's Crash Holly. But there it is, Crash Holly Light Heavyweight Championship. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, again, this is part three. I have three more parts to this. I got Taka Michinoku coming up with X-Pac. And then I'm going to finish it off with Dean Malenko. I just got to do the voice. But, um... Thanks for watching. If you like the videos, hit that like button. If you got any comments, suggestions, please let me know. And I will see you next time.